Okay. So, this is an update from the other day. First of all, here's the front panel loader, and here's the button on the XCM board, and here's the button on my proto board. Showed you before. Click the buttons here, the lights come on and go off. So nothing different about the way this thing operates on the surface. Uh, all the output bits are still output in the same spots, but what we've changed is the internal. We've done some stuff to specifically to make this more complex to understand how things play together. So two of my LEDs are now driven by one wire in and two are driven by another wire in. So instead of having a single wire in with four bus taps, I have two different wire ends, each with two bus taps. So those seem to work fairly easily. Uh, it's all parallel busing, not a problem. Okay, before I had the wire outs, the wire outs um, had a single wire out that I was taking both buttons in on bus taps and then firing them back off to the OK host. To be able to put two wire outs together, which is what I did, I broke it up into two. One's at address 20, one's at address 21. Uh, here's the XCM button, here's the prototype board button. Uh, address 20 hex and 21 hex. This was not immediately obvious. Um, the, it requires an OK wire OR to bust the two together and bring them out to the OK host. The internal to this somewhere is some sort of timing that says you get yours, you get yours. Um, somehow sequences them. I don't know the details. I'm going to trust the details work. Obviously they do. What was not obvious was how to wire these guys up. I tried wiring them as a parallel bus, and I kept getting bus contention type messages, you know, two outputs driving each other. Uh, or if I hooked this guy up the other way, uh, it would just not instantiate big chunks of the schematic because it wasn't doing anything. Uh, what I figured out was, and we're going to go to the the Verilog library for these modules. So inside the Verilog library, um, up here at the top is the OK host, and the OK core, and a wire in, a wire out, so on and so forth. And down here at the bottom is the wire OR. And what you notice is that there's a parameter, n equal 2. Now, that was originally n equal 1. I went through and looked at some of their Verilog code, uh, in some different places to see how they were putting it together. So you see the n times 17 down to 1 um, OK 2. So in this case I changed it. It was a 1 allowing me to have um, 16 inputs. Now it's n equals 2 so I've just doubled it to 34. And I don't know my Verilog real well, but I think that that's initializing them as zeros, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know yet. I'll get there. So I changed this to a 2, and after I came over here to a 2, you choose the module, and then you can come over here and update the schematic symbol, which I did. So now if you notice this schematic symbol, instead of, maybe you can't read this, uh, it used to say the OK2s OK were 16 down to 0, and the OK2 OK is 16 down to 0. Now it's the OK2s OK are 33 down to 0. And so on my bus taps, I have to know which one's which. So 20 is taking the lower 16, and 21 here is taking the upper 16, 33 down to 17. Once I did that, everything compiled and everything worked. So that is how you wire up multiple wire outs into the wire OR. And from the documentation, it also says that uh, if I do a pipe out 
or a trigger out, it'll have to go through the wire or also. So those are important things to know.